Families fleeing lockdown. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to talk about an article today highlighting families that are, well, leaving Melbourne because of the lockdown. Now, I'm not at all surprised. When we had a lockdown here in Queensland, it was the final push for us to pull our daughter out of day school. We educate our kids using distance education with a private school, which has a whole lot of advantages. But Mina's behavior, she kind of needed to experience day school for a time, and she wanted to do one term. And, uh, you know, that was the final nail going, no, we're not, we're not going back for this. Because I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm thinking, why am I spending this money when I can get better quality of distance education at a distance school that's set up for it? So I'm not surprised that the lockdown is forcing people to leave Melbourne. And perhaps, perhaps this is the final solution for housing affordability, guys. Let's start by having a look at just the current property prices in Melbourne, this is the weekly asking prices for all cities average, and we can see houses are, are quite affordable, over a million bucks. Good old Australia. We have a look here. This is national for houses, including the region. you got 680. And if we keep going down, this is asking prices for Melbourne. You can see Melbourne have peaked up over 1,000. They're climbing back up again. Units, pretty flat, guys. And this is listings. You can see... 30 days, not really, you know, slight jump in listings growing up. We've gone down to 2018, lifting up again. Nothing too exciting here. Here's the total property listings. You can see units and houses. Majority of them are houses. Well, that is Victoria. Now, rents. This is where it gets interesting. Look at those unit rents, everyone. Look at those unit rents going down. Even houses are going down. Why rent when you can buy? But there you go. There you go. So units now... 361. Let's see how far back in time we have to get for that. There we go. What's that? 2016. 2016. So what? Five years back in time to get the same, the same rents. Here, and this is this is where it's really in, interesting with rental listings. Look at the number of units, or sorry, the number of properties under 30 days on the market. It's just skyrocketed double where it normally is, pretty much. And it's all units. Everyone, it's all units. Those international stewards, uh, students, the holiday makers, the migrants, none of them are coming anymore. So all this stock is flooding on the market. Good investment, anyone? And we can see here just how many properties over listed and house and unit listings as well. So let's jump and have a look at families fleeing the lockdown everyone with an understanding of the melbourne property prices maybe this is the solution to housing affordability just lock down cities again and again and again till people just flee what do you think everyone we finally found we finally found the solution guys we've finally found the solution fantastic so melbourne's COVID lockdown forces families to move away from the city so when tegan maggots was going through Melbourne's second lockdown with her family, which lasted for 112 days. 112 days. She decided they had to get out permanently. And I'm not surprised. There's lots of viewers in the comments that are saying the exact same thing. 112 days. Here we've got three days in Queensland, and it's annoying. You know, I'm still going out and about shopping yesterday, seeing people wearing masks, and I don't know why. Maybe beh behaviors have changed. She's lived in Melbourne almost all her life, but decided on an extreme move to rural Tasmania alongside her husband and two small children. The family escaped two weeks ago and have landed in Lemington, a little fishing village over an hour's drive from Hobart with a population of 283 people. That seems like a really good change. <laughs> it was day 42 of the second lockdown. It was around my birthday. And that is actually the day I feel a bit sad as my mum passed away two years ago, she told the newspaper. I woke up and we'd been in our living room and had only been able to leave one hour a day. And it felt like forever. I thought, what kind of life is this? And what kind of life am I providing for my family? With Victoria enduring its fourth lockdown in just over a year after another outbreak, Miss Margaret is incredibly grateful to have escaped just in time. Her husband, Stu, who grew up in Tasmania, was able to take his digital transformation job with him on the move. That's the thing, guys. You're going to have some people that are not affected at all by this, that are going to be able to move around, while others that aren't. Meanwhile, the 36-year-old works as a freelance writer 
and also has a children's book publishing company, so they can work anywhere. So I don't blame them for going to rural Tasmania. Lockdown really exacerbated some frustrations we already had about Melbourne. My husband is used to lots of space, lots of nature, and lots of and not a lot of people. And then COVID was also an enabler, she explained. He used to have to commute to work, and his company cancelled their office, so he started to work remotely. The move was literally that we wanted more space, wanted to be closer to nature. We had a dream of building our own home, and that was never going to happen in Melbourne as there is no land left. Miss Margaret's added that her husband never found Melbourne as friendly as his home state, and COVID has exacerbated the feelings of isolation. I think that the frustration we felt with lockdown was combined with the increasing hustle and bustle of Melbourne, she said. My husband moved to Melbourne in 2010, and in just 10 years, he had been there with an extra... What? In the 10 years he'd been there, there were an extra million people. There you go. The traffic and parking was horrible, and there was constant pressure to be working 24-7. There you have it. There you have it. This is, this is why, as our population grows and GDP figures go up, the quality of life for people go down. Our GDP growth per capita has been, been depressed since 2008, everyone. It's been growing. But one could make the argument that sustained growth below trend is depression. Stage the uh, stage four lockdown also, and I'm I'm worried this is going to happen in Brisbane. I'm worried Brisbane is going to see the same type of thing now, or also with property going up, rents going up. Stage four lockdown also prevented them from renovating and selling their four bedroom house in Park Orchard as quickly as they wanted, meaning it took two months to action their plan to leave. She added, "They bought a big block of land to build their dream home on in South Hobart, something they would never have been able to afford in Melbourne." The family then rented and moved to a 10-acre block on the beach in Lymington to spend the next two years while they build their new home. That, that sounds pretty good. Why don't you just stay on the 10-acre block? Miss Margaret said the family had never been happier, including their kids, aged two and four. They're going to know no difference. This is going to be their, their entire life now. I'm very happy for those kids. We've got the most beautiful beachfront property, and we are looking out at gum trees and the water. The kids are so happy. There's this whole sense of community I like that I've never had and people are so friendly, welcoming and so helpful, she said. The kids spend literally the majority of their day outside now. So that's just been amazing. We've got our own veggie garden and fruit trees. We live in a village, basically. So all the local, uh, the little local stores have local produce. I just feel like this is sustainable and I'm living in a utopia. She's living in a community, not a city. They aren't the only ones making the move either. New research has found that 4 in 10 Aussie families are in the process of relocating or considering a move with the cost of living and lifestyle factors one of the biggest motivators, according to a survey from Real Insurance. Across the country, there was a net movement of 43,000 Australians to regional areas from capital cities in over 2020, the largest since the data was first collected in 2001, according to the ABS. The most sought-after areas around Australia were within 30 minutes of the coastline for two-thirds of people, the survey found. Professor of Property and Housing Economics at the University of South Australia, Chris Leishman, said employment and training had previously driven Australian movers, but lifestyle was emerging as a big reason. Such choices were beginning to emerge before the pandemic, but living through COVID-19 seems to have strongly energised a growing cohort of Australians who highly value some of the attributes offered by living in regional locations, he said. The report found a big shift on the Aussie dream as well as well with staying healthy and enjoying life ranked first by 23% of people compared to owning a home, which was a priority for only 8% of people. Now that's a big shift here. That's a huge shift. The baby boomer generation, and to a lesser extent, Generation X, strongly associated financial stability and retirement with home ownership and were determined to become homeowners as soon as possible. This is evident. There is evidence that younger generations are seeing things differently. They value health, well-being, and lifestyle more highly, but they do still want financial stability. It's just that they are no longer convinced that this can be achieved through home ownership. Well, yeah, home ownership for some people is so far out of reach. Can you blame them? Can you blame them? They're probably giving a better life to their kids. Of course, this is also partly driven by realism and the fact that housing affo the housing affordability crisis 
we've had before the pandemic has actually become much worse as the economy has recovered more strongly and quickly than many commentators predicted. Yeah, because the government is just flooding the economy with money. They're hitting the housing pinata. So everything's getting more expensive. Yay, give me my free government money. And okay, I can only spend it how the government says, so everything inflates. You've got the candle on effect right there, bubbling in that sector because the supply of money is getting injected through property. Awesome. Of those who had given up on home ownership, 61% cited affordability. 21% say had concerns property was currently too expensive, while 17% had worries about potential debt. Although the dream of owning a home had proven to fade for many, 9 in 10... Hang on. 9 in 10 of those who were still looking to become homeowners were finding it hard to get onto the property ladder. Almost three quarters feeling largely locked out, the report found. So there we have it, everyone. We've got the solution to housing affordability. Repeated lockdowns for hundreds of days to drive families out of the cities into the regions. And I am really happy for this couple and their young kids. This is awesome news. Good luck to them. Good luck to them, you know. And I wonder if they're, they're part of that group that apparently Tasmanians are all under mortgage stress because they're spending 30% of their income on housing. Bloody oath, you'd do it for that quality of your life, wouldn't you? You wouldn't care in a heartbeat. Anyway, guys, what's the solution? Well, as I'm saying, somewhat facetiously, is this the way we can get housing more affordable? What do you reckon? And are you planning to make a green move? As always, thanks for watching. Please like share, subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us with self-wealth or stake. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says. Use our affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or even Aussie Broadband. You can support us by Gold Pass or by good old PayPal. Take care, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.